Hello, this is Donna Reiners, and I hope you're having a brilliant day in Texas. It is a gray, cloudy day, <clears throat> cloudy, cloudy, gray day. And uh, Craig and I were taking a walk around the lake, and we we were walking through this patch of stickers, and we were talking about how when we were kids, how we hated getting in the middle of a sticker patch, because you know when you're a kid. You go barefoot all the time. And but when you're an adult, you kind of wear shoes, right? And so we were talking about how it works in real time in our lives and how um, sometimes we find ourselves in the middle of a sticker patch. <laughs> and today I can tell you I have felt like I've been in the middle of a sticker patch. I'm sure I've felt this feeling before, but I've never really thought of it as being a sticker patch before. And so these are the thoughts that came to my mind. I wrote them down. So I was like, you know, you know, what's it feel like to be in a sticker patch, right? So one is you feel stuck. You feel stuck because you don't know what to do. You don't know which way to turn. You don't know if you're going farther into more stickers. You don't know if you're going to hit a dry patch where there are no stickers. You just have no idea what's happening at the moment it's happening. It's almost like it's paralyzing because those, those little bee stickers hurt and they stick to the bottom of your foot like no tomorrow. And when you try to stop and try to peel them, pick them out of your foot, then you're faced with more stickers on the other foot because you have to stand so still. And then you try to find your balance and what happens? What happens is you fall down and then you get stickers all over your body. So it's like, what the heck? Danged if we do, danged if we don't. And so then um, also with stickers, stickers comes the feeling of I'm afraid of pain. Like I don't like stickers, they hurt. They might be little, but they're mighty <laughs> and they stick on the bottom of our feet. And if you go into falling down, then it's like it just it's it literally I know you were paralyzing already, but it's almost paralyzing because it's like it hurts so bad and it hurts everywhere. And you don't even know where it doesn't hurt because those little stickers smart, smart. Unsure which way to go when you're stuck in a sticker patch and you don't like it. So I was thinking about these different things that happen when we're stuck in a sticker patch, but we're faced with having to step through the sticker patch because we have no choice or we just can't see the clearing, you know, or God forbid we took a walk and we forgot our glasses and now we really can't see where the stickers are. Lost our vision in the midst of the sticker patch. There's all sorts of things that come to my mind when it comes to when we're little kids, we're just totally free and running around and doing our thing normally. And, and then we get a sticker patch and we're like, <clears throat> we don't usually, when you're a little kid, you don't stop and go, hey, come get me because you just figure it out. You sit down and you figure it out and you keep on going. But when you're adults, sometimes it's even more it causes you to like stub your foot even more because because you're an adult and because you're mature and you just don't know what to do and you don't know where to go and you want to ask for help but you can't ask for help because you know you're supposed to be mature so you're not real sure what direction to take all these little things came to my mind but when you're a kid man I remember looking around trying to figure out a way through the sticker patch, you know, and it wasn't paralyzing to me and I didn't feel like a total failure and I didn't feel like I wasn't going to make it. And all those things didn't enter into my mind when I was a kid. They just kind of come full force when you're an adult. And I guess you get to a point when you're an adult and you figure you're just supposed to have it together. And you're supposed to know what to do and what not to do and where to ask for help or not to ask for help, how to trust God, how not to trust. I mean, you just don't, it's like it's almost paralyzing when you end up being an adult because now you've got all these rules and all these expectations you placed on yourself 
and the simplicity of being a child with the intention of a child, which is I'll just get through the sticker patch. <laughs> I'm just going to get through the sticker patch <laughs> and keep on trucking and then go ahead and keep playing and go, go up a tree and, you know, and all the things that we do when we're kids to, to, to rock on. And so I was just thinking about the SOS stepping on a sticker. <laughs> There are other acronyms for SOS. Yes, there are, but this was about stickers. And so what came to my mind when I was contemplating, well, what's the solution when you're stuck in a st sticker patch? What came to my mind was the picture of those people that do the fire walking. And maybe somebody who watches this has done fire walking. You know what I'm talking about, but it's like there's a, like there's a supernatural intention that comes with fire walking. You know, there's something that comes when you, you're contemplating, okay, that's fire. It's going to literally burn me. I'm going to be on fire. I'm, I'm going to get to the other side and I'm not going to have any feet left. I'm going to fall and my body's going to be on fire. All these things that go through your mind as you set your intention to go through the fire. And I don't want to stop and ignore or avoid the times when God can rescue us from a fire because he can. And sometimes he does. And I don't know that we even know all the times that we've been rescued from a fire. You know, I remember years ago, uh, being judged for certain things that my behavior, but people didn't know what, what I was freed from already or what I was fighting through already. They, they didn't know. Instead, they just harshly judged me for the behavior I was in instead of seeing the behavior I was fighting to not do at all. You know, like the people who you know, they got off drugs already and now they're just smoking a cigarette and, you know, people judge them for smoking when it's like, you don't understand. They just got off crack cocaine. You know, there's so many things that go into our lives as we're walking out life. And so I think that this is a season of intention, that this is a season where we have to stop and we have to have intention regarding what's happening. And we have to have intention regarding our lives, regarding, um, how we see God, whether we see God as good or whether we see him as a uh, sharp taskmaster who is wanting to kill us and wanting to harm us and uh, really just going out of his way to make us face all sorts of consequences. And there are consequences. I'm in the middle of some consequences right now. But in the middle of my consequences, I realize, wow. I wonder what consequences God already rescued me from. And then this is what I'm facing right now. I don't know. There are angelic beings that are called to help us and this and to walk out life with us and to keep us from stubbing our stone and sometimes stepping on stickers. But who knows? Maybe we missed a, an, a poison ivy patch and we just landed in stickers. But maybe we missed a poison ivy patch that would last for several weeks. You just don't know. <laughs> what we've been saved from and what we're being saved to until you walk through. So I just felt like somebody needed to hear that in the midst of your sticker patch, don't give up. Don't give up on you. Don't give up on God who lives inside of you. Don't give up even on those that maybe are losing their patience with you because maybe they think you should have it together or you should do this or you should do that or you should have done this and you should have done that. And well, if you just done what I said 25 years ago, then this wouldn't have happened. You know, all those things that some Christian or not want to lasso around our neck and do the blame game. And I just want to strengthen you today and, and say, don't blame yourself. Uh, there's a difference between blame and accepting responsibility when you're in a situation where, dang, man, I saw this come in and I did not yield to this and this time and this and that time. And now I'm faced with having to walk through this sticker patch. 
you know, set your intention to not just walk through the sticker patch, but walk through the sticker patch as if you're on a fire <laughs> and that you're not going to step in and stay in, but you're going to walk through and get to the other side, that this is not going to be forever, that this is not your life sentence, that this is a, a, a season, a challenge. I'm doing that myself with some things. It's a season, it's a challenge of retraining, of recalibrating, of, of regrowth, of maturing in areas that I haven't matured in before, of being rooted and grounded in things that I wasn't rooted and grounded in before. And now I get to be rooted and grounded in the midst of stepping on the stickers. And now, instead of avoiding the pain, I'm accepting a level of pain without receiving the sentence that goes with pain as if it's my lifelong sentence forever and ever and ever. But it's just a challenge to walk in and walk through until I get to the other side. So I just bless you today. I pray God's life and God's breath and God's peace and God's power into you and on you and through you that you would know that you have not gone this far to turn back now and you've not gone this far to give up now and you've not gone this far to look down now and you've not gone this far to turn around now but keep moving forward if you have to stop and rest then stop and rest but don't stop and rest for so so long that you lose your breath and you lose your strength we watched a movie the other day of this man who was climbing Mount Everest based on a true story and he got to a place where he was just so tired and so exhausted up the mountain that uh, he called his family and said goodbye and said he wasn't going to make it. And I, I don't, was he so cold and, and just, it was just made, did he not have enough oxygen where he could think clearly where he had the gumption to keep going? And in the same story, there was someone else, there was someone else who had visions and their body was riled up and just messed up. I don't know how he even got up and walked. But he kept seeing a vision of his wife and his kids going, come on, come on, you're going to make it, come on. Maybe we should get a glimpse, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a glimpse into the ones inside of us saying, come on, come on, you're going to make it. Come with me, you're going to make it. I live inside of you, you're going to make it. Mm -hmm. I'm your strength, you're going to make it. I'm your confidence, you're going to make it. I'm your great expectation. You're going to make it. I'm your authority. You're going to make it. I'm your breath. You're going to make it. I'm your life. You're going to make it. Because I didn't fail, says the Lord. And I'm not failing you now, says the Lord. So I just bless you today. I pray you're encouraged. I pray you're strengthened. And you will know that you are more than a conqueror that the one who lives inside of you has already conquered. And I pray that you would see that you are the land of the living. You are already the land of the living, that you're not moving toward the land of the living, that you are the land of the living. And that we would live with that in mind as we set our intention to walk through this fire and get to the other side. I bless you today. <laughs> Until soon, this is Donna. Bye.